nervous like three seconds as I'm oh, no. refreshing <laughs> YouTube. And I'm like, is this, <laughs> is this, is this thing on? Like, hey, we're supposed to be live. If you can hear the sound of our voice and our goofy <laughs> faces, please type. Yeah, Anya, shut up. You're live. Uh, I'm Anya, by the way. I'm just refreshing YouTube, just making sure this is working while I don't hear any validation for your life. It's working. Awesome. Hello. Welcome to today's live demonstration with our dear friend, Mark Brewer. <laughs> I'm Anya Marcus. I'm the art director for Etcher. I'm your host for today. Uh, and I'd love to know. So I see some people in the chat, a lot of familiar names. Where are you watching from? Let us know in the chat. Uh, Mark, as everyone's saying hi in the chat. Hello. How are you feeling today? Yeah. Hello. How are you doing? I'm feeling, I'm feeling happy, inspired, and it's always good to be here. Good. Good, and I can't wait to see what we'll be doing. Okay, before Mark starts, I just want to do our regular, you know, house cleaning and everything. Oh, sorry. The volume was all the way up for Beth, and, and I guess this woke her up right away. Uh, hi, Judy. Hi, Robbie. Okay, uh, before we start, today's event is, as the title suggests, a live demonstration. It's not a class. We have a bunch of classes on our website, so it's not exactly that. Um, because the classes are meant for you to paint along, you know, during the class, Mark and the other teachers, they go slowly. But that's not what we're doing today. So I just want to uh, give you a heads up. Uh, however, uh, this does not mean that you cannot join and paint alongside. Of course, you can. I have the reference photo. I will put it in the chat when we start. So no worries there. Um, so yeah, Mark will still go over everything. I'm here, I'm the bridge between Mark and you. So ask all of your questions as we go. Just type question all caps in the chat followed by your questions so I can easily spot it. And I will feed Mark the questions as we go and I will save some for, for the end, depending on the nature of the question. So anything related to today's demo or Mark's course, just shoot us, that's why we're here for. Talking about Mark's course, uh, we're talking more about that course near the end, but of course, one of the big reasons we're here today is to celebrate the launch of Mark course. Uh, the, the launch is happening this Saturday on the 20, I, I'm, I'm looking at the calendar. Thank you, 24th. I have a daycare calendar here. My, my son made it for really sweet, 24th indeed, Saturday at noon. Um, it's a five-part course. So Mark and I work closely on this. Mark, correct me if, yeah. if I'm wrong with anything, but yeah. Mark will go over everything ink related from yeah. every tool that you'll be using to the techniques, so dip pens, fountain pens, uh, brushes, techniques, how to apply. Where, where to... Yeah, you know better than, I mean, you recorded everything. I just kind yeah. of bumped you uh, yeah. along the way. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot, a lot in here, a lot involved. I don't think I really even realized how much is is in it, but you know, we use toothbrushes and brushes and dip pens and fountain pens, and it's awesome. It's a pretty nice little nice collection. Yeah. So if you're into getting to learn more about ink or just getting started with ink, this is for you. We'll explain more details about the course later. Uh, let's go for the right. Let's go. Dive right into the fun right now. Uh, I think you want me to shut up. So yeah, this is completely live. Mark will be inking live. So okay. if the ink You're just washes all over. Ready to know, ready to roll, ready to start this inking process. Yeah. Uh before we before we go over your screen, uh Mark, do you wanna tell us what we'll be doing today and tools that you're using? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, just one last thing. Yeah. Uh peeps. Stay until the very end because we will be giving away a hot press sketchbook. Oh, Disclaimer, wow. if you prefer cold press, it's fine. We can give you a cold press, mm. uh, but we will give you an extra sketchbook. Yeah. There's a giveaway at the end. You just have to stay tuned and be close to the computer at the end. Yeah. Okay. I uh, have one of those sketchbooks and they're awesome. So that's a awesome giveaway. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I love this today, but, today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to ink... Uh, a flamingo. You may have seen the reference photo, as with a lot of these uh, drawings that I do, whether I'm inking cats holding raspberries or whatever it is. Uh, um, 
you know, there's usually a reference photo of a cat or a raspberry, but I'll change things as you will see in this flamingo We make a major change and it, it makes it fun. And it's what I enjoy doing. So um, uh, we're going to use a fountain pen um, using this fountain pen here. I have a backup in case something should happen. I'm also going to use a brush. And we're going to use, uh, that's a size zero, if anybody wants to know, as well as an old toothbrush uh, never put in my mouth and uh, just for inking, splattering. And um, lots of rags because uh, it gets pretty um, you know, pretty messy when, when we're inking, especially when we're splattering with our thumb, as you'll see. So, uh, okay with you, Anya, I will. Yeah, um, let's go. Uh, I will, yeah, we'll go right into Dive it. Dive right in. The reference yep. image is in the chat. I just pasted it. So feel free to see the original flamingo if you wish. Uh, okay. And yeah, you're welcome to follow along, but we won't go slowly, all right? Remember, this is a live demonstration. This is not a class. So there's a little bit of a difference here. Let's go. Okay, let's do this. I always have a little bit of a, a little um, piece of paper or something. Just sometimes these, whether you're using a dip pen or... Um, a fountain pen. Sometimes you just want to go like this just to get them going. You see how this one's not going? So I need to make sure it's charged with ink and get this thing going here. Okay. So we're going to start, uh, I'm going to start right here. I'm bouncing my line up and down too. So you see, it's like uh, rather than just, you know, doing a straight line, which you certainly can, you know, you could just do lines like this if you want. I'm going to move my, I'm bouncing my, uh, bouncing my line here. Give it some, give this uh, some character. The cool thing about doing this pre-recorded for the course, just FYI, is when we're doing the actual course, we have footage that is really close up so you can see the pen better. So just letting you know that there's a little bit difference on how we're doing this life versus the course due to tech. Is that the head of the, yeah, that's the head. This is the head, yeah. I'm gonna put those eyes on so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing here. Notice I keep things pretty loose too. Uh, it, it, that's not something you have to do, but this is all part of a style. You know, the, when you do your own inking, you may want to keep things nice and clean. And that's a, that's a look in itself. If you look at stuff that's created by Disney, you'll notice there are really super duper clean lines. Pretty cool. So. Okay. So Mark, why do you usually start with the, the head? Like, is there any method to this? Uh, if I thought about starting on this side because I am right-handed, so it would make a lot of sense to go from this side to this side. Um, but um, uh, I wanted I wanted to do the head first, and, and I don't really have uh, a, I don't really have an answer for you for 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 that one. Um, I think that it just kind of helps if you're watching, you knowing that this is a this is a flamingo, and to see how I'm manipulating the 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 uh, reference photo that you have, that'll help rather than doing the whole thing and then in this end. So I'll keep my hand clear out of there and make sure I don't um, get ink on my hand. And ink is inevitably is going to be here. And sometimes, you know, your lower finger, your hand, it's, it's just going to get somewhere. So you have a, I always keep towels around. And if you get an ink spot, blotch it out or clean it off your hand so you're not stamping your paper. How much pressure are you applying to the pen? Yeah, I'm applying a lot of pressure down here uh, and not trying to be too careful about it. Remember, this 
animal is full of feathers. So um, also you'll notice I'm making a lot of these little lines here. I mean, I guess if this was a cat or something, you'd think it was fur, but you'll know this is a bird. And this is just kind of keeping it nice and nice and light. These, these lines thicker on the bottom. You'll see when we go in, I'm gonna make everything sort of uniform at this point. Um, but when I'm done, we're gonna take, uh, when I'm done with this line, we're gonna take a brush and we're gonna scumble in here and make these lines really thick down here. So things on the bottom are thicker than things on the top. It gives the drawing weight. I turn my drawing sometimes as you will yours. Remember, these are feathers, so it's not be. I'm not going to be too clean with my lines. You can shoot some lines out here like this. So I know that you'll be using dip pen, fountain pen, and brush for this, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Any reason why we're starting off with this one? Um, th I, I think that with this fountain pen, we're going to just, um, yeah, um, with this, with this particular, um, with this particular pen, uh, we'll pro provide a lot of, uh, lines that are, um, thick and thin and thick and thin. And I, we can do that with a dip pen as well, but, um, this is, uh, we talk about this in the, in the lessons, uh, you know, about when you're using a dip pen, you have to constantly be constantly be dipping and that's fine. I used, I used my gosh, I probably used a dip pen for probably 20 years. This, this fountain pen is relatively new in my arsenal. Maybe I've had it for, you know, six or seven years or something like that. But considering, you know, the length of how long I've done this, I used a dip pen most of the time to get some of these lines, but this holds more ink. And so we're not here. We're not here all day. Um, dip pens are going to take a lot longer, but I'm going to use a dip pen. We're going to, I'm going to show you how a little bit, how to do that too. So you usually prefer fountain pens just for the practicality in comparison to paper. Absolutely. Especially a lot of time a lot, um, on Etcher, uh, on your videos, I see a lot of, um, a lot of plain air drawing, sketching. And I think if, if you're going to be into sketching, um, plain air things you should be you should be thinking about you know using a uh, a, a fountain pen because there's nothing like being out and about and then having to um having to um you know put more ink in your pen you know so okay we have great questions from the chat so james uh, yeah. is asking yep. about the ink is it waterproof this one? oh yeah it Definitely waterproof. Uh, is it, his name is James? Yes. Yeah. There's nothing like finishing a drawing and saying, wow, this is nice and black and white. I think I'll color it. And then you go to apply water and your ink bleeds all over your beautiful mm -hmm. drawing. So you want to make sure that you use waterproof ink. Please, yeah, use waterproof ink, especially if you think that, you know, you might like to, you might like to, you know, color it. So, um, Okay. Um, also, James, uh, to further elaborate here, Mark talks a lot about types of ink and paper that he uses mm -hmm. and why. Uh, and that is a free lesson we have in the middle of the course. You don't even have to be a subscriber or purchase the course to watch that lesson. I'll put the link in the chat in a second. So feel free to check it out. Oh, Mike Handley has a wonderful question that we talk about in the course as well. He's talking about preferences for food a nib or flexible nib for fountain pens. Uh, we can talk yeah. about that closer to the end. So I, I don't want to distract okay. you. Sorry, sure. unless you want to yeah. bring it yeah, up. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We press it later. Okay. So how different are those uh, lines that you're making for the, the tail? Because they look so much softer. Can you bring it closer to the camera when, when possible? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, here you go. See if that's, is that, is that better? Oh yeah. Uh, Much. Oh, yeah. perfect. Great. <laughs> Let, let's keep, let's keep it like that. Let's just keep the, right the, the recording sure. like this. This is great. Sure. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, sure. So these lines here, these are little feathers. And a lot of that, you you, you notice that that's not obviously not on the reference. I, I, uh, on the reference photo you have, I, I'm sure that along the line you know, of looking at other people's art, I've seen stuff like this, you know, and it just, um, you can interpret that as the feather, you know, coming off of literally coming off the back of the flamingo, or you could interpret that as I do. And that is that it's just, this is very loose and feathery and, um, very delicate, soft feathers. That's, that's how I, that's how I see it. So, so we're going to do, so, so, um, be nice to do thick lines, thin lines, um, you know, some feathers that are complete, some pet feathers that are, you know, that are like wisps like that, you know, we can put like some, actually draw some lines in there like this. It look like, help it look like feathers. Those are clearly more delicate than these lines here. Let's see. Did you turn your pen? So Bev is asking, it looks like she's not asking. She's, is, did you move, twist your pen? Sorry, if you turned your pen for the light feather tails. No, I did not. But but I talk about that in in um, in the in the lessons. Um, how you can use a fountain pen. Um, you, you can use a dip pen this way. You know, you can also flip it over. And I don't like I mentioned. I don't know why manufacturers don't talk about that. But a lot of these pens you can flip over and get an even thinner line. You know, crazy thin hairline from using um, from using this side which is very cool. I love inking. It's uh, I, I talk about that too. It's like I love inking. Uh, I love lines, and I I love um, just doing this. Is a there's a real sort of meditative feeling to the whole thing when you're sitting inking. Let's use um, let's use a dip pen for a while. I have I'm gonna pull out pull out a a pen nib that I'm gonna use here. Any any specific reason why you're shifting tools i mean is it just to show how different yeah. they can be or yeah just to show you how different how how they can be and i have um here i have this same thing here so this is a this is a dip pen we're using now so and then we're going to dip it in here we can use see we can get it started on this board we'll use this for a little bit let's be fun help you kind of see how it all I'm using the back of it right away because this nib seems to be a little bit thicker than the last one. Totally fine, but we can kind of, I kind of like this okay. nib. I haven't used it in a long time. How about that? This may, this may be a, a start of, Life, yeah, exactly. Using this nib again. Okay. Forgot how nice these are. So you're, you're trying to use the back to keep a line consistent. Between exactly. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And not all nibs work with, again, it's in the lessons. Not all these nibs work with all fountain pens. You can't just take a nib and stick it in a fountain pen. A lot of times fountain pens are um, designed for, for specific nibs. In the one I use, you can use two or three different nibs. And that's nice. You know, some, some variety uh, with a dip pen, you can put any nib in there. So, which is really nice. How do you balance this so it looks like feathers instead of fur? <laughs> uh, I I think that um, it, it depends on how 
how you look at something, but I think that um, if if I have the back of a let's say a cat or something, and the, and the line is like this, I can take the back side of that pen and just kind of you know make some lines like this. If you can see that, oh, well, you're you know, using I, the ink that was already on the paper and kind of spreading it. Yeah, just kind of, yeah, exactly. And and I'm also, you know, I'm also um, dipping in here or if you use a fountain pen, but I think you can, you can, you can bring it out a little bit. And I think that will help imagining this is like the back of a dog or a cat. This will help you see that, make it look like fur, you know, as opposed to feathers. When we have feathers, um, we, what we can do is we can show a, we can show a feather And then, and we, I guess we could do a bunch of these if we wanted to, but you know, the, you take the basic shape of this feather and we can also kind of just incorporate some lines like this to help just give the illusion that, you know, these are, this is a very feathery, a very feather, feathery creature. See, you know, and your mind helps fill in, fill in the, the blanks mm -hmm. here as we're doing here in this, in this drawing. The balance between suggest suggesting and you got it. reality. Uh, correct. Correct. Practice. Yep. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. I could draw. These are the legs. I could draw just straight lines down, but if you look at the legs, you know, of a flamingo, which is why you should always use reference, they're really sort of built, I'm, I'm being literal about this, but they're literally kind of built like this. If you look at them and they have like these lines going across, you know, so that's where this is coming from. Like just, uh, you know, not making the line completely straight, just kind of bouncing it a little bit. And you know, every time I, I you know bounce these lines, I, it also just gives helps um, uh, you know give give character to to the to the um, thing that you're drawing. Not only you're bouncing the lines, it looks like you're purposefully leaving white areas, like it's a dotted line of sorts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that'll help make them look, I think, leaving those with those lines not being particularly straight, it'll help make those lines uh, help make the legs look a little more um, spindly and, and delicate. So. And the other thing I would like to say, too, um, is that to those who are starting to ink is just remember that there is no there is no trick to, to, you know, and there's no trick to, to doing this. The more you practice, the better, the better you're going to get. That's all it is. It, it might feel awkward to hold Sorry, the brush. Sorry, you drawing a bit too, because we're oh, losing. Yeah. <laughs> These <laughs> legs are so long. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some long legs here. You're right. <laughs> yep. So. So um, there, like I uh, finished my thought, I was saying that, you know, practice, um, I'm not sure, practice makes perfect, it's true, you know, so um, you might feel awkward holding a brush in your hand, um, um, but after a while, it's not going to feel awkward, you know, it's like anything else, you just, you practice, and um, you get better at it. I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to go back to this, this uh, pen that I was using here, this fountain pen. Okay, put some in. I'm using the back side of that fountain pen, not the right side, the back side, just to keep these lines nice and thin.
It's a fun image to ink. I cannot believe how how long these. The, oops, I was gonna I was gonna dip the fountain pen. Yeah. Also, sometimes if you have a cup of coffee on your desk, as I often do, sometimes you will forget and dip into your coffee, <laughs> which which actually the light brown line of a coffee can actually look nice, but I never really want to drink it after that. So, <laughs> so probably not that healthy. So let's put, um, I'm going to continue here with these lines um, that are not, not thick, but not super thin. And I'm just, uh, well, this is going to be, um, we're trying to create an illusion of underwater. So we definitely want to use, leave some space in here. So. See, not just not completely draw it. So let's try this one here. Let's do this. So the flamingo's feet are underwater. Yep. Yeah. And we'll that a flat snip? What's they say again? The the nib you're using is it a flex nib? It is a flex nib. Yeah. This is. Um, can I say what nib this is? Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. This is a um, a zebra G nib. Very popular, very popular flex nib. So then um, I'm going to use the probably use the back side of this again to create some some water rings. I flipped my pen over because I want to get I want to get them a little bit thicker. It's nice to have the versatility of being able to use thick and thin, thick and thin lines. It's kind of nice, huh? That's beautiful. Okay. All right, so let's um uh one a cool a cool thing that they um, I learned when I was inking comic books uh, for um, for Archie in particular was I remember it was the first time I experienced that when they I would see X's like that and then this is when I was much younger and I wasn't doing the drawings of doing like more like ruling lines around comic strips or panels, I would also fill in blacks. So when I saw something like that, take a brush. Oh, it's and, a know, sign to fill it with black. A sign that you got to fill it in. Yeah. So there you go. Because, you know, you get, you pick up pencils from, um, from Archie Comics and, you know, it was the way, it was just one of those, the ways um, a penciler would tell an inker, you know, this is, this needs to be, this needs to be black. And this is a good example of like, um, when I just left that white line there, that's something that, you know, when you're, you're in some, some ways you're, tracing when you're inking but in other ways you have to understand uh you under have to understand to leave lines you know leave white lines like that um that heaviness goes on the bottom drop shadows and you know we talk about that in the lessons and that's you know that that's important stuff and that's that's not tracing that's just l knowing that when you're when you're working on a character like this the bottom line you know these underneath lines here should be nice and nice and thick to give that character weight. What if the light source is from the bottom? What if that flamingo is looking at it? <laughs> then, something irradiating well, light underwater? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then that would be a different type of drawing. Yeah. It would probably, then it would all be, that would all be thick on the top and this would be illuminated. We'd have to, we'd have to create, uh, create some way of, of, um, 
um, letting the, you know, the viewer know that it's something it's being illuminated from the bottom. So now I'm just going back and I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking for spots that need to be darker. So right, definitely under here, you see how long, are you using? this is a zero brush and I've even taped the ferrule. I, I get comfortable with my brushes and I don't want to just go out and get a new brush. I'm more comfortable unless it starts to split and I wash them out pretty well. So the brushes, the bristles don't start to split, but um, if they, they hold together, I'll tape a brush. I mean, this one looks like it's even broken in, in a spot, spot here, but this is just for scumbling. We're not making any kind of special lines as you'll learn in the, the videos, the video lessons. We use a really nice, um, pretty fancy uh, brush to, to do some serious inking with. And that's not, that's not this brush. This is just a sort of a, um, just uh, an old an old brush that we used to use to create different line patterns and and I like to I like to make it look kind of rough like this scumbling you know dirty okay I'm gonna go back to uh go back to the fountain pen here charge that up get it going I like some of these lines that I covered with the, with the brush. I want to put some of those back in. So now I'm starting to think about a little bit about like just some adding some texture to, to this bird. And I know that these joints here are a little, they're often darker. So I'll put some lines between those lines that I've made just to darken them up. See that? Just a little bit. And then I want to put, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll use this side, but when I start, I often start using the back side and I want to put some depth into these feathers. So I'm just going to stay, I'm going to just create these lines and you notice how they're all going the same way. Okay, right down here. Okay, pretty light. Under here a little bit. A lot of this is feeling too, uh, when you know, when, um, when, you're, when you're drawing, when you're creating, a lot of it's feelings. So now I'm not going to start up here, but I'm going to put more lines going the same direction, but I'm going to move it down and I'll start here. So they'll progressively get lighter as we get to the top. Maybe I'm going to skip over some of these feathers, not put lines in there. Amazing how that is already giving so much form and life to the flamingo. Yeah, just yeah, just the messiness of the whole thing, right? Um, yeah, I like to love to use the example that you know this is the feeling that's going into this ink right now. This is you know, you know, painters have done this for years. It's you know what makes us go to the museums and and look at pieces of art because they, they really have feelings. You know, you really kind of get a, get a sense by looking at a drawing of, uh, you know, all this delicacy and, um, you know, fun happening here. And, you know, I, I love that kind of stuff. Pretty cool. Like that. Let's see. I think this foot here is in back, so I'm just thinking maybe we just 
get our line going here. Sometimes when you're scraping at the paper, you'll get you get pieces of paper in there. So you got to clean it out. You know, wipe it off either with a rag or just wipe it off on the paper. Okay. Yeah, and there are not too many of those because we don't want them to look fuzzy, right, Anya? <laughs> not a fuzzy bird, feathery bird. Okay. We can so. make any erase. No, I know. How <laughs> feathers, how fur. That's right. We can do anything we want to do. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna just uh, add some, uh, add some, uh, it's, it's just a little bit of ink on there and I just dipped it in, in water that I have on the side and just give it a little, give, give it some, you know, give it this some feeling. You don't have to do too much of that. Um, and then uh, we're gonna take a toothbrush and we're gonna dip it in our ink. This is where it gets X toothbrush, please do not put that in your mouth. Please, after yeah, use no, please do not use this in your mouth. <laughs> please do not. Okay. It's not so, a treatment for whitening, okay? <laughs> that's right. It is not charcoal. And then, uh, yeah, before I put this on the paper, I don't want it to just, I don't want it to be too thick. So I'm just going to just kind of, yeah, that's good. To go move this over. If you want, you can use your hand. Again, I said that this is pretty didn't get pretty um, messy. I usually use my hand. You could use a piece of paper to, um, to block off the ink. Like if I just want ink down there, I don't want it up here. And you just put a piece of paper right there and use that as a shield. I'm not too concerned. So I'm just gonna add some, some, some flavor here, maybe under here, right? Maybe just a little bit, you know. I really think that, you know, using, um, using ink like this really helps, you know, give some, some variation, some contrast. It's almost like you're, you're applying a gray. I love that. All right. Can you see okay still? Everything good? Yeah, yeah go okay. ahead. Everything great. Okay. I'm collecting a lot of questions for, for afterwards. So oh, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Keep these questions coming, please. A lot of those feathers that I inked drop out because we just put another layer of of ink on top. So I'm just kind of going through and looking at some of the areas where I think that I want you know want feathers to be and filling in the gaps. So it looks nice and busy and feathery back there. All right.
Okay. And we wanted to, what we could do is we could put some, maybe put some um, stones in the bottom here. See what that looks like. Just adding little details. Finished? This is it. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, a lot of it's just, you know, a lot of it is feeling and, and that'll come when you ink and you practice and you hold a brush, or you hold a fountain pen long enough and you look at, you know, you look at your drawing, you'll see when you want a little bit of, you want some, uh, some additional lines in there. It just kind of comes and anybody can do it. It's, it's, it's like anything else. It's practice. So. Beautiful. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I love to hear, I love to hear um, the questions that um, some people may have. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll grab the, the question is, oh, Judy just posted one that is great to start. So Judy asks, how does Mark decide what features of the real animals to change to make them into characters? I see. Well, for example, this flam flamingos have long necks. And uh, part of it is just in your head, you're, you know, you're formulating an idea, writing an idea with those long heads and tying it in a knot. And that's sort of funny, especially if the flamingo doesn't look like he's, he's hurt, he's happy, he's just, he's tied his, him, his neck in a knot. It, there's a humorous aspect to that. So, so maybe, maybe that would be an idea that I had for this. That is an idea that I had for this and tied it into a knot. You know, I'm also thinking these legs are really long. It's probably something that you could do with these legs too. And I haven't, I haven't given that as much thought as I have with the neck. Um, you know, maybe a mouse has large ears, you know, and maybe you want to emphasize the large ears in a drawing or you know it's all about it's um i think just putting your own self into something i think that their long necks are humorous so what can i do with that neck and then doing this creates this this interesting looking character beautiful um question from i have a bunch of them i'm trying to order them so pardon me for taking a while here so joey's asking if you have any tips for making the line variation feel more natural to the hand while drawing. Wow, that's a great question. Um, is there any way to, to make it, I mean, there's nothing to me more natural than I guess, just when I, you know, uh, what was that question again? Uh, how, how, how does it, how do you make it feel more natural in the, in the, in in the hand while drawing a line variation, feel more natural to the hand while drawing. I think that just comes with practice. I have to tell you that, you know, drawing a line, drawing a line like this seems very natural. Drawing a line like this isn't maybe isn't as natural, but, um, but it, it sure does, it sure does, it sure does feel okay. It feels good. And when you get finished, you get, 
you get a really uh, unique looking line. Um, so, you know, um, how, how do you, I don't, I don't know that I don't think anything is more natural than just, you know, writing, you know, um, use, you know, making lines like this, that seems to be pretty natural. Um, also, as I said before, practice, just holding that pen in your hand, like you've, mm -hmm. you've held a pencil or a pen, uh, holding the fountain pen in your hand and, and pressing down and, and lifting up and getting those variations that becomes more natural, natural too. Maybe that's a better way of answering that question. Again, that just comes with practice. How, how, how many hours have you, um, have you held the pen in your hand and, you know, bounced up and down with it? Um, how many miles of lines have you drawn? You know, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's definitely a sure way to get to a point where you can uh, make those lines feel more natural uh, in your, in, when you're holding it in your hand, you're creating them on paper. That's a really, that's a really good question. It, was. So, geez, it is a after good After working question. through that, I think it's just practice. I think it's just practice. Even holding a brush, it's like, okay, you know, everybody can hold a brush like this. And it's, you know, it seems like, you know, when you're like, when you're writing with a pencil, but would you get the lines that we talk about in the lesson, you know, you have to lift that pencil, you have to lift that brush a little up, you have to be a little more mechanical about it. And then this seems when you're this, I know this will feel not natural, but after a while, it feels very natural to, to make a brush line like this. It's very natural. So again, it just comes with, um, that comes with practice, right? So it's like riding a bike or anything else. So Thanks, Mark. Also, I, I saw some questions about different types of ink. Uh, sure. So just a reminder, sure. we do have a free lesson on inks and paper that Mark recorded. It's already on our website. You, all you have to do is follow the link I put on the chat and you can you can check it out. All right. Um, so, uh, is the is this course suitable for people? Okay, I'll, I'll just the course. We'll just get dive into the course in just a second. Uh, so we have Patricia, who has received a new shiny, which looks amazing, glass dip pen. Uh, okay. She would love to learn more about how to use it. So, is yep. there any big difference between glass dip pens and other pens? Will she learn how to use her dip pen better in the course? So, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I think uh, glass pens, I haven't used them a lot, but I've seen them. I've used them a couple times and I've seen them uh, YouTube videos of other people using them. And that's fine. You can use that uh, in this course as well. You can use anything you you if you're comfortable using that glass dip pen and you can use that glass dip pen. But I think it's still still important to learn about what paper you're inking on, because not all papers accept ink the way a watercolor paper does or uh, an illustration board. Um, that's all, that's all really important. And, you know, there's cross hatching and a lot of other techniques that you can use along with that, that glass dip pen. So that's cool. And they're pretty too. <laughs> I've seen a lot of them. They're really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and the comment here. So Alicia says she got a fountain pen, but that comes with water soluble ink cartridges and she's having a problem finding waterproof ink cartridges. I yeah. have a trouble with this word cartridge. Cartridges. Yeah. You, Thank yeah you. Car cartridges. Yeah. Cartridges. What was her name? Alicia. Alicia. Um, yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen, I've never seen a fountain pen with, waterproof ink cartridges and you have to remember this manufacturers on a whole are still designing fountain pens for people who write uh not necessarily draw i think etcher has has created fountain pens and they're thinking of those artists who draw with them certainly the fountain pens that i use they are but most of them on a whole i think they're still making them for people who write. So it makes a lot of sense that they wouldn't need waterproof ink. It's probably more expensive. It's, it's a whole other layer. So I would suggest if she, I would suggest that she uh, finds a, well, we talk about that in the, in the, the lessons. It's like, there's a, there's a thing inside uh, the fountain pens that are converters and those converters hold ink. Okay. And
and um, and you maybe she can find one of those converters to put in her pen. Of course, you'll need waterproof ink, and then you're going to need something to put, you know, to soak up, you know, suck up the ink and then put it in your pen. Or um, again, in, in, it's all in the lessons. You know, we also always teach you different filling practices with your pens and perhaps she can do that with, with her pen. But I have not found a pen that has waterproof, really, really waterproof ink where you're going to have the confidence as I could with this is to, to watercolor on this whole thing and that ink just stays put. That's, that's really what you want. I think a lot of people who, who are, you know, and even let's just say you're not, let's just say you don't want to, you don't want a watercolor. I still think you would want permanent ink because if it were to get splashed with coffee or some sort of liquid, you wouldn't want your, your pen to run or your ink to run rather, you know, so. Can we swap to your face view? Absolutely. Like slowly transitioning into the course. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Rayon. By the way, apologies in advance if I mispronounce anyone's names, totally not on purpose. So Rain's talking about if we can um, damage a fountain pen while using uh, waterproof ink. And I may talk about this in the course. Uh, Bev is saying ink with shellac damages the fountain pen. Uh, so yeah, we definitely talk about that in the course as well. We go over the specifics of the fountain pen anatomy, how to yeah. assemble, how to disassemble. It's like I'm That's talking right. about the mentors here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Shellac is a beautiful ink. I I think Windsor and Newton makes a shellac ink, and it's amazing and looks incredible on paper. And even when you tilt the paper a little bit, you get a little bit of a shine. It looks awesome. You will ruin brushes. You will ruin your fountain pen. You will ruin it all with this ink. So when if you're going to use shellac. Mm, I, I love it, but just make sure you use a pen, a brush, clean it off. If you're going to use a, if you're going to use a pen, use a dip pen, not a fountain pen, use a dip pen. And of course you're going to clean it off when you're done. And yeah, it makes a absolutely beautiful line. I haven't thought about that probably since we talked about it briefly in the lessons and yeah, that, you know, um, like I said, I think Windsor Newton makes one, I think it's called uh, spider black or something and it has a little shellac in it and it's so cool it's just so cool but not waterproof and will ruin your uh will ruin your mm -hmm. um your fountain pens if you put them in there just kiss them goodbye all right so two more questions then we'll talk a little bit more about the course okay because i don't want to run for too long we've been here for an hour almost and okay. if we have time if mark if you have time we have some interesting questions that we can leave for the very very big end after the okay. giveaway we okay. have to give away in a second, so just remi awesome. remember that. Okay, a um, couple more questions before we pitch the course here. Uh, oh, Bev, thank you. I remember the course well, and it's an incredible course. Can't wait to do it again. Bev, I think you're in for a treat because we revamped it. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. yeah. It's a new yeah. course. That's right. That's right. Sequels usually aren't great movies, but in this case, this sequel lesson is is phenomenal. It's revamped. It's redone. It's, it's a lot, remake. It's not a sequel. More, it, right. Exactly. Exactly. It's just there's just so much more information packed inside it, and uh, I'm I'm proud of it. So hope you enjoy it. Uh. Oh my God! I'm I'm having a blast reading this. Head. I'm trying to focus here, guys. But this is great. Um. Uh, uh, Kim is asking, are there any particular nibs that are better for for drawing? Because she uses fountain pens, but mostly for writing, and she's very careful with the nibs. So any thoughts there? Yeah. Uh, for sketching, like when I'm out and about doing quick sketches, I don't want a flexible pen because a lot of times the flexible pens are very pointy and they'll stick in your notebook or whatever when you're trying to sketch really fast. So it's nice to have... Um, Nice to have a fountain pen with a little, I still like the flex, but a little bit more of a rounded edge. So you can, so you can sketch a lot faster, not have to worry about it sticking into the paper. Like, um, you know, I'll even sketch sometimes with this zebra G nib, but mm, it's pretty pointy. I have a, I have another pen that I'll use with it. That's still flexible and, um, and, and uh, but not as flexible. It doesn't have the pointiness and it's nice to, nice to sketch with. So, um, and again, you have to find a fountain pen that, 
that comes with a nib that's designed to do that. Because when you're talking about the feed of a fountain pen, we go all oh, into all of this in the, in the lessons. You talk about the feed, that feed is designed to release a lot of ink or a little bit of ink. And sometimes fountain pens, you can put, like I said, a few different nibs in them. Some fountain pens, it's like, please, you, some fountain pens will say you can use different nibs, but I find that that's not always the case either. They really would rather you just use the nib that the pen was designed for. So it's kind of like, you're going to, you kind of like shop around. I know I bought a lot of a lot of fountain pens to find the ones that I like. Uh, you don't have to spend, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a fountain pen to find something you like. I think I found, I like the Etcher fountain pens. I really like these fountain pens. There's a, there's a, there's one with a really stiff nib and, uh, I, I like you that too. You can mention the brands. You can mention yeah. the brands of your favorite sure, fountain sure. pens. They're I, asking. I, yeah, I love the um, Opus 88 for sketching when I'm out and about sketching people, buildings, cars, whatever. I just like it. It's just fluid. And that's not real. It's not very flexible, but boy, it works great. That's called an Opus 88. And my favorite pen is this, and this is the Ackerman pump pen. It uses a Zebra G nib and you can put a couple different nibs on here. And I've, I've put different nibs on here and they work great. So kudos to this company for making a pen that you actually can put different nibs and they work. But this Zebra G nib, which you, you buy, you can, it'll, you can buy one of these pens that comes with this, but you can also just buy these nibs. So if you're using a dip pen, you can put a Zebra G nib on the dip pen. You know, maybe you don't want to spend the money for, you don't want to spend 35 bucks on a 25 bucks or whatever this was uh, on a, on a, fountain pen and you know you just put the nib right in a dip pen and you have the same the same effect you just have to dip a little bit more thank you you're welcome uh, the chat is amazing kim is asking if the course is suitable for people who are just learning to yeah. draw so I'll, I'll defer this to you and i'll yeah i think so yeah i think so absolutely it's not this isn't for people who have inked before this is just the beginning i i think that if if I were not an inker, an artist, I could see watching these lessons multiple times. You know, maybe you want, you watch a lesson on a brush a couple of times. Maybe you, you get something out of watching more than watching it a second time. And then, and then maybe you end up watching the, the, the part on fountain pens a few times, maybe three or four times. And then you really hone in on, on which tools you like the most and you extract the information that that you know that you can get from those and 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 you're on your way so it's not for people you know um i i learn from 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 even people teaching beginning beginning like watercolor classes there's always something that refreshes my mind uh that i that i forgot about or or charges me up to say oh i want to try that again i totally forgot that and you that's that's what you can get out of this class too. So I would definitely say this class is definitely for beginners, definitely for people who've never even held a brush in their hand. And I know a lot of people haven't, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, if you hold it like a pencil, you get a totally different effect than if you pick that up and you start to use it a little more, um, a little more vertical. Thank you. Yeah. I just dropped the link in the chat. So uh, any information about the course you can find in the link I just put there. Um, I'll just quickly give you a, a download on how the course works, and uh, this will also answer a great question from, uh, I have it, I had it, Ryan. So Ryan asks, in the, in the main course, I'd be interested in seeing some nature landscaping, textures, and straw houses, etc. Can you please tell me more of what you'll be sketching? Of course. So, uh, pardon me. This course is very much about inking and not as much about the subject. What does this mean? And the reason I'm, I'm answering instead of Mark is just because Mark and I spent a lot of time together to, to work on this. So we were together all, all the time. Uh, I know this course like the back of my hand, Mark, uh, drop me at any given time. Um, five classes, right? So this, this course will be live. We're launching it this Saturday and every Saturday after this one, uh, Mark will be there live to uh, 
teach you the class. The video portion is recorded so we can ensure that everything is edited to perfection or as much as we can. The audio uh, sometimes is live, sometimes it's not, depending if it's if you're inking, it's live and we'll be pausing the video, all right? So we will slow down, make sure that everyone is keeping up. We will pause, we will address all questions. Um, the, the course is structured in a way that you will learn how to use the different tools, dip pens, fountain pens, brushes, and then you'll go about techniques. And the last class will be doing a final project where you will be applying all of those techniques and all of the knowledge using the tools you feel most comfortable with. Because the point is not only you understand what is at your disposal and how to use it, you will also uh, know techniques and you know how, so where should the line go thick where should the line go thin where should I add more pressure and what kinds of pressure do I how, how do I adapt what tools are better for my style so all the techniques that you will learn Ryan they can be applied to whatever subject you wish to portray specifically yeah. for this course because well you guys know Mark you just saw what he was drawing he's a cartoonist uh, we will be doing uh, animal cartoons mostly because why not it's fun it's loose but everything you will learn you can apply to whatever the yeah. homework we have homework every week mm -hmm. and you have uh, practice sheets where you can practice the different kinds of of lines where you can practice the different kinds of textures and if you are a complete beginner and I think this is really important we will not be asking you to draw the animal from scratch. So Mark created uh, a transparent, a, a, a transparent-ish version right. of the final, the final project for every single class. And there's a homework that is also like printed with transparency that you can ink on top if all you want to focus on is using the tools correctly. If you want to go and draw it for yourself, that's great. You can also do that. If there are any reference image, we will provide those. Then you can do your own version and you can apply it to, to houses. You can apply it to landscapes. But it's really about how to use the ink properly that we're covering here and what techniques you can use for what. So you will get out of the course understanding what to put where, not just this is how you do a house. No, no, this is how you convey weight. This is how you convey light. This is how you convey balance and then you go and you do whatever you want with it right um, yeah you articulated that very well that's right because it's if we focused if we just focused on landscapes and somebody would say oh i'm not into lands uh, landscapes you know this is this is about inking so you can absolutely apply it to anything houses landscapes I draw a lot of animals. I think they're fun. That's my thing. But that doesn't mean that when I do draw a house or a landscape, I'm applying these same thick, thin lines to a landscape. So Thank well done. Mark. Well said. Um, all right. Uh, I think this is it pretty much about the course. Uh, it's at a very accessible price. Click the link, see for yourself. I just put the link in the chat. I'll put it again in a second. Um, yeah, we had the early bird until yesterday. Uh, Ryan, the early bird just wrapped up, so we had it up as, to, as long as we got it, but it's still 50 something. Can't remember from the top of my head. Um, it's five live classes. You already have 30 minutes right. for free. And then we have a live feedback session at the end, entirely right. live. Mark right. will be there with you. You submit your homework on our website. You know, we can upload your work to the website or you can email us if you're not comfortable sharing, which we totally understand. And Mark, you will be there giving feedback on everyone's assignment yeah. and yeah. helping you with whatever it is that you need at the Absolutely. end. So if yeah. you see it's about seven hours, seven and a half hours of content. I didn't realize we did so much. I knew it was a lot. I didn't realize it was actually seven hours. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. It's a lot more than yeah, a lot more than seven hours recorded too, because you had to probably edit a lot of stuff down. So yeah, we well, we didn't do as much edit as you think. You did a pretty great job recording everything. Nice. After yeah. I bugged you to record things like three times, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Story. We got it. We got it right. <laughs> we got we it. We got right. it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. So this is it about the course. So you already have three classes there. So you follow the link. You can get started already without paying for anything. All right. You just watch whatever we have there. If you like it, consider supporting Mark. Uh, the more people that subscribe or buy the course, the better for everybody. So I, I highly recommend you jumping in there. 
Uh, we start Saturday, so you have time to make your decision. Okay, any specific questions about the course, feel free to put them there. In the meantime, we will move, uh, we will proceed with the giveaway. So again, does this sound like a good like drum roll? Or is it annoying? <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Drum roll. Okay. See, we're trying. All right. Um uh yeah, don't worry about the drawing part, Kim. Everything is provided. Okay, uh, if you miss a uh, great great comment here from Patricia. If you miss any live session, it's fine. The recording will be immediately uploaded, all right? We will go later, do like a rough edit just to make sure it's polished, but it will be immediately, the raw version will be immediately there. You can watch later, you have access for it until the end of time. That's the deal at the end, at the day of, of me saying this. So yeah, yeah so please go ahead and, and have fun. Okay, yeah. giveaway, we are giving, so we, we advertise giving away a hot press extra sketchbook. We uh, advertise hot press because it's better for inking instead of cold press. Why? Watch the free video and uh, you'll learn why. That's right. Uh, right. So, however, um, if you prefer a cold press, it's fine. Okay. So, if, if you win and you want a cold press, it's all good. So, for us to do this giveaway, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a post-it note. And I'm going to write a number from 1 to 100. Do not type anything on the chat yet if you know what I'm doing. Don't do anything. It's not valid yet. I will type a number. So it's, it's empty. You can see I am not cheating right in front of you. I will type a number from 1 to 100. I'm folding the paper here. So you can see I'm not getting this paper off camera. No foul play. So there's a number here. And I'm leaving this on camera. Oh, I like and how you're now, doing it. I was wondering, thank this you. is exciting, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Just, you don't have to take my word for it. You don't know me, it's fine. But <laughs> I, Anya, am fair. So now <laughs> you can start, you can do it just once, pick a number from one to 100, put it in the chat. The number closer to the one that I wrote in this paper wins. If, random number, okay, random number. If the number that I wrote is, and I'm going to give you a number late, after 100, so I'm not excluding anything. If the number I wrote is 132 and someone writes 131 and someone puts 33, the, the lowest number wins, okay? So just in case there's like a tie there, the lowest number wins, unless someone says the exact number. So yeah, again, from one to 100, go, everyone has their one entry, the closest number wins, and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting 10 more seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, over. I'm giving it a buffer because of the delay between me talking and the stream. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna type in the chat stop so there's no buffer. Stop. Okay, now let's find what number I wrote. 72. 72. Okay. So let's see what is closest to 72. I see a 71. <laughs> okay. I oh. see a 71. Unless there's a 72 here. Here. 71 wins. Joey, congratulations. You just got yourself a sketchbook, nice. an Etcher sketchbook. Oh. Please email us hello at etcherstudio.com. Email us at that email address. Said you're the winner of Mark Brewer's live demo sketchbook. Oh, and tell congratulations, us which... Joey. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, They're awesome. They're my favorite. I use them. I use them regularly. It's the only sketchbook I use. It's fantastic. Oh, my God. I swear I didn't pay Mark to say this. This is I didn't know he was the only sketchbook he used. I... Oh, yeah. Oh. No, absolutely. I think, I've, I think I have, since I started using them, I must have uh, six or seven of them up there at this point. Yeah, I love those sketchbooks. They're great. Thank you, Mark. I swear this was not, I did not, I did not prompt this. Okay, Joey, you won. We have, uh, go to our Etcher Lab website. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with our Etcher sketchbooks, we have portrait landscape mode. Uh, tell us which one you want. We have smaller to bigger ones. So your pick, all right? So email us, tell us you're the winner and tell us which one you want, uh, which size, which press, uh, and we need your address, yada, yada. Team will get back to you and We'll make it happen. Okay, so we're done. I have a couple more questions if, if we have time. Mark. We have time. Let's hour. do it. We have time. Okay, so 
So we're just gonna do like a fire, like rapid fire of questioning here, because I'd like to to address those questions. Uh, before I go, if, if you're leaving the, the stream, my lovely, lovely people, please do answer this class survey here. It's super important for us so we understand if we are doing a good job with these streams or not, or what is it that we can do better, all right? Uh, you'll be directly evaluating the stream and myself as your host. Um, and one last link for the course. So here it is, so all links are there. Okay, so questions, <clears throat> scrolling to the end of my file. Um, Mark, any, okay, I must say, I don't know what this is, ink sticks. Ink sticks. Any tips on using ink sticks, Catherine asks. I don't even know what that is. Ink I've never heard of this. Yeah, I have heard of these ink sticks. Um, I think they're probably awesome if I use, I'll tell you, I use ink tense uh, color pencils from Derwent. Um, and I guess I, I, I don't, I think there may be some, ink, some sort of pigmented ink or something in them. I'm, I'm not sure how they, how they work, but I know they have ink blocks as well. And they're, they look very much like, Oh, I don't have any on hand. I used to use them all the time. Basically they're instead of a colored pencil, it's just a stick. Uh, and that's a colored pencil. So instead of having the wood on it, it's just a stick. I think the ink blocks she's talking about are probably the sticks. And they're, they're somehow their color pencil meets ink. And uh, oh. they're vibrant. And I use them to embellish my drawing. So I'll watercolor. And then after I watercolor, I like to use really intense uh pigments whether it's a colored pencil or in this case ink tents probably like the ink block she's talking about or i'll also um use um oil pastels and that's a, those are really really pigmented and they sit nice on top of watercolor and give it you know can give it some pop so that's all i can say about that because i haven't used those um oh, wow. i haven't used them yeah bev contributed to our cause here she just said they're used for a painting. You need to grind them on a stone and then paint with a brush from them. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Learn something new every day. Learn, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you ever use colored ink? Mark James is asking. Mm -hmm. Or washes of colored ink? Yep, sometimes. I'll use, uh, I use, um, I forget what brand it is. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I like these. Oops, that's not it. Yeah, FW inks. You've seen these. These are, you know, FWs. Uh, light, right, like that. And they make really nice, vibrant colors. So it depends on the. It depends on the. Uh, the drawing that I'm doing. You know, if I want, I know if I. Um, I can't think of an example of what I would use that, but I definitely have a whole bunch of them. Probably have fifty or sixty different colors, and sometimes you just want you want something more than something more intense than watercolor. You want something really mm. pigmented. So I'll use those sometimes. And I, even though I think they say safe for, Oh, they don't. Okay. I think some of them even say, Oh, they, they, they show you that you could use them with um, like maybe a fountain pen or something. It's like, I, I would, I would use, I would use ink that says, designed for fountain pens. I've, I've ruined a lot of fountain pens uh, by putting ink in them that I shouldn't. Thank God they're probably only $10 fountain pens, but still. Well, at least that learned from Mark's mistake. In mine, I've done that. Um, that's how you learn. Just bang yep. your head against yeah. the wall. You don't have to. <laughs> work. You don't have to learn the hard way. You won't bang uh, your head against the wall as much if uh, if you take the course because <laughs> we talk about little, little details like that. Sometimes that's just uh, that really can up your game. Just learning little stuff like keeping you know tape around your ink bottle because I can't tell you how many times you know you're dipping and after you do that a couple hundred times, whoops, the brush or the pen stays in the longer and you and ink goes everywhere. So if you have a you have a tape ring around it or something like that, then you can't spill the bottle all over the place mm. yeah and there's a bunch of those little tips in the little course little things yeah yeah with the glove and well if you want to know more do the course yeah. mike mike Hendley, which by the way since you're you're still watching this uh 
Thank you. Mike Henley will also be doing a course with us in October on drawing oh. animals with graphite. Fantastic. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. He's an amazing, amazing like teacher, amazing that. human being. So cool. So Mike is asking preference for food a nib, food a tip, or flexible nib for fountain pens. Oh, that's just two different nibs. It's like it, it, it there. It's there's there's no right or wrong. I mean, it, um, that's like saying, you know, would you prefer to drive, uh, you know, a red car or a white truck? I mean, I guess it depends on what your what your illustrating those mm -hmm. food nibs can be amazing because if you've used one you can get really thin really thick lines we go over that in the in the lessons and they're they're amazing i don't find myself using one as much but i get excited talking about them because they're really cool they just order you just have a, a lot of versatility in this one little food nib so um i'm not sure i mean i use I, I like i said i don't use it as much but i um i love it and I have one on hand and it's, um, it has ink in it. And, uh, so I, I, I do use it sometimes. It's not as much, but then my art doesn't require, um, a food, a nib type, you know, it's sort of, I like to keep my drawings somewhat scratchy and, um, not so much, you know, thick and thin, but not in the way of a nice, a food, a nib can just give you some absolutely beautiful lines exactly and this is the cool thing about the course right you go in you understand what does why what mm -hmm. what does what and why and then you just adjust it to how you how mm -hmm. you. by the way if you haven't yet do listen to the podcast interview i interviewed mark the podcast went out last week um we talked about a lot of things too so feel free to to watch our interview okay i really want to wrap it up super soon Kim, quick recommendations for spitball dip pens that you mentioned. Any specific model that you suggest? Um, speedball. So Speedball is a brand and they make a lot of really cool dip pens. Uh, flat ones. Um, I think I use a, when I want to make some nice writing, I'll use a C. I think it's called a, a C or a C4 perhaps. Yeah, I think we mentioned it in the, in the, in the lessons. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but I think it's a C or a C4, but it's, it's flat and it's really nice for writing. And they also make some other ones for, for, for drawing. Um, I haven't used a lot of those because I've found that I found the, the, the zebra G nib. That's my favorite nib. And it just pro provides all the lines that I feel like I need in my drawings from hairline to really super, super duper thick. So but Speedball is a great brand, and I think they make ink that's um, that's for fountain pens too. It's just a good brand. I think they make probably make waterproof ink as well, and you know, so you're not going wrong when you use Speedball. There you go. Okay, and one last question, and we're done. Uh, I know I didn't answer every single one, but we're going over time, people. So apologies for that. The the ones I'm choosing not to. Uh, the, the ones I'm choosing not to answer are all answered in the course, right? So I, I, I try to get to as many as possible. One last question for, from James. Um, do you ever use dry media to add color like oil pastels, pencils? Yeah, yeah, I, all the time. Um, finishing a drawing right now for <gasps> my, friends, my friends at Four Seasons Brewing Company. And this is a label. And um, yeah, there is definitely all of these raspberries here. Those are all, most of those are all um, uh, ink, tense, colored pencil, dry media on top of watercolor. And I'm not finished with this yet, but um, this raspberry will primarily be some oil pastel and some color pencil because it will be um, more intense color than the raspberries the raspberry here, the watercolor, and it will provide some pop and some real intense um, color when we when we print it and put it on put on the and print it and put it on the beer label. So absolutely, yeah, I that's my thing. I love it. Watercolor, color pencil on top of it. Sometimes oil pastel for accents. Learning something every day. Okay, so apologies. Uh, we are wrapping up because we went. Mm -hmm. way over time this was oh. supposed to be a quick demo it's never quick thank oh. you mark for being yeah. so generous with your time for sharing oh. it with us 
thanks for having me and doing these lessons and and I'll post um on my social media Mark Brewer draws on Instagram and Facebook I'll post reminders that it's coming up on Saturday at the time and stuff too so if you want to follow me there maybe I'll post some of the some of the I usually post a little bit of what I'm working on too so that you can kind of help get to know the stuff that I do and you can always fire off a question Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Mark will be there all the time. I hope to see you in the course. Thank you so much for watching this demo. I'm, I'm thanking you, Judy, Kim, Ray and Bev, everyone. Thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, we're signing off one last time. I'm leaving the link to the survey in the chat and more information on the course so you can enroll or subscribe to the platform of your choice. All information is on that page. Any questions you have, shoot us an email at hello at etcherstudio.com or just ping Mark and any of us will get back to you. Uh, I, I promise we'll, the team will get back to you pronto. I don't make promises for Mark because he's swamped with work. Uh, so I will, we will. I will do my best. I'll be, I'm going to be, do my best to be on that too. I'd like to answer some of these questions. I know well. you, I know yeah. you will. I just realized I'm volunteering you without asking for permission. And, really <laughs> yeah. rude on me. and I'm like, we yeah. don't have a team for this. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> We have I'll answer these questions as well. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So, so yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope to see you there Saturday. Uh, in yeah. Anything you need. She doesn't. Oh, sorry. Microphone. She doesn't email. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for being here.